Hi everyone, today we're looking at amps and amp settings, specifically bass amplifiers and why you probably will need one as you're progressing as a bass player. So this right here is a Laney RB3 and this is the one that we're demonstrating today. These are available on our online store now. Um, different bass amps do have different controls but this one is a good place to start as it does cover a wide range of tones and controls. So let's jump straight into it. We're gonna go from left to right. So obviously the one on the left here is what we call gain. Gain, people confuse with volume, and that is actually not true. Gain is completely different to volume. And the reason why people confuse it is because it does actually change the volume. It changes the loudness of a bass. But it happens before anything else happens in the amplifier, which means if you played a bass, could be 200, 300, 1,000 pounds, it could literally be anything. If you played a bass through an amplifier, that bass has a certain level of output, which means when you turn the dial full on, you're gonna get X amount of loudness, and that depends on the bass. So if you plugged a second bass into the same amplifier and touched nothing else, you might get a stronger signal or you might get a weaker signal, and that's what the gain is there to do, the gain is there to set how loud you need to make the bass so the amplifier gets enough volume. So what we do is we roughly set it about halfway and we describe this as 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, like a clock, is straight up. If you set it at 12 o'clock, which for this one is five, and then you play your bass once we've got to the end of the amplifier, if it doesn't quite sound very good, you can dial it down and you can dial it up depending on the bass you're playing. So the bass that I'm gonna be playing later is very loud and puts out a lot of volume, so that gain is going to go lower. So you do have to adjust it as you go. It's not a one fits all, unfortunately. So just be prepared to dial that up or down depending on what bass you play. So if we move on to the next one, the next one here is bass. There is a little switch here, which I am gonna come back to, so don't worry. This one is bass. Bass is basically the bottom section of our sound. It's the boom of what we play. And what I mean by boom, it's the thing that shakes the floor, the thing that basically shakes the entire building if you turn it up too loud. So when we're playing a note, we don't want it to be too bassy, otherwise it sounds like mud, it sounds really bad. So what we do is we play bass, and we literally play a really long note, which we will later, and then we dial it up and we dial it down. And you want to find that sweet spot. Your ear will pick up on this. So you play a note, you go slightly up or slightly down, depending on the room that you're in. This will change depending on what room you play in or whether it's a festival or whether it's a gig or whether you're just playing in your bedroom. So it's something you do want to adjust from time to time. Same thing goes for the mid. So the mid is the middle of our sound and that is basically where the clarity lives. So if you're playing and you can't really hear any definition from the notes, and it just sounds like you're literally just playing a blur, then you need more mid. And basically what we do is we turn that up until all those notes sparkle and sound really nice and clean, and that's where your mid should be. Usually we only have to turn this up a little, so you don't have to crank it full blast. So maybe one o'clock or two o'clock, like a clock, and that should be enough, but you will have to adjust this depending on what room you're in or how big the gig is or how big the festival is or basically just how loud the band is in general. So be prepared to tweak it, but that is where we get our clarity. It's where the notes live, basically. So I did skip one out and this right here says para and this is parametric. Parametric is basically an adjustable amount of what frequency we want to use. So when we're talking about amp tone and bass tone, we're talking frequency. Frequency is basically how loud and how fast something vibrates. So this one right here, if we set it to 12 o'clock, says 550, so that is 550 hertz. And that basically means it's vibrating at 550. If we turn it up, the frequency is going higher. And if we turn it down, the frequency is going lower. This is attached to the overall volume of the mid. So the reason why it's called a para 
is because we actually have control over which frequencies we're cutting or boosting. So you've just heard two words there that you might not understand, cutting or boosting. A cut is where you reduce something, which means you're dialing it to 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, anything that is lower than 12 o'clock, which is dead on. And when we're boosting something, we're dialing it past 12 o'clock, so 1, 2, 3 o'clock. Anything to the left is cutting, anything to the right is boosting. And basically that can be done for bass, middle and treble. So we haven't spoke about treble yet. Treble is that little tiny sparkle and that brightness of your sound. So if you're playing and you just want that extra little bit of crisp on the top, that's what treble is. So you don't have to turn a lot on to get the full benefit of this. If you turn it too loud or too high in terms of the clock reading, if you turn it up way too high, what's going to happen is it's going to be way too sparkly, way too bright. And that's what we refer to when we go, that is ear piercing. When you hear a sound and it cuts straight through your hearing, that is treble. So it's nice to have a little, but way, way bad to have too much. So try and dial it in and get that sweet spot. Once again, it does depend on the room and it does depend on the amplifier itself because there are many different models, many different brands. So you want to play a note and tweak this as we go, and I will show you how to do this later in this lesson. So just to recap, bass is your low frequency, and that's the boom. That's going to be the bottom end of your sound. So if you want a really thick sound, bass is what you're going to boost. If it's way too much, you're going to cut a little bit down just because then it will roll off nicely. The para is the frequency that we can control with the middle, and some amplifiers don't have this. Some amplifiers may just have the middle. So if it's middle, then we've got a fixed frequency that we're cutting or boosting. But if you have a para or a parametric for its full title, this means you can control the frequency we're changing. So just be wary that if you don't have that, some amplifiers don't, so do not worry. The middle is basically the clarity where we get all of our notes, where they ring out nicely. It helps us cut through the drummer, helps us cut through the band. And what I mean by cut through, it means we're able to hear ourselves. If you can't cut through the rest of the musicians, no one will hear you play bass. And obviously that is a justice in itself. We do not want that. That's an injustice to everyone that's learning bass. So middle will help you cut through everything nice and neatly, gives you a lot more clarity. Treble is that little sparkly bit on top and the brightness. So a little goes a long way and it just makes those notes pop out a little bit. A little bit too much and it will pierce your ears and everyone will say it's a bad sound. So just be careful with that. And then cutting, as I've already mentioned, but just to repeat, cutting is when you cut something below 12 and boosting is when you're increasing it and you're going above 12. Hopefully all that makes sense. So we've now got two other things we need to talk about. We've got the volume and we've got this little switch here. So we'll ignore the switch because some amplifiers don't have that. Let's talk about the volume. The volume, as people get confused, isn't the same as the gain. The gain is basically adjusting the level for each bass you play. The volume is how much signal and how loud it's going to be when it reaches the speaker, which is this right here. So you could have loads of gain and no volume and it's gonna sound really bad. You could have no gain and loads of volume and it's still gonna sound bad. What you need to do is get a decent level from the gain and then adjust the volume so you can hear yourself in the room, in your bedroom, over the band. And once again, that does need to change. It's nice to start on kind of about three, so three on the amplifier here, which is roughly about 10 o'clock, because that will be a decent amount of volume, but you will have to adjust it if you can't hear yourself. So the volume is how much volume, how much like kind of sound is going to the speaker. So if you're playing something and you sound really quiet, it's the volume that you need to adjust. So everything that I'm now going to explain is only on this amplifier and not on every amplifier. So if you don't have these, it's just because your amp doesn't. Other ones, as the one that you've seen in the background of some of these lessons already, have a lot more controls. So it just depends on what you've got at home. So this one has a little switch here which says comp and that is a compressor. 
a compressor basically takes all of the quiet sounds that you play. So if you accidentally hit a string with the tip of your finger and it's super quiet, a compressor basically boosts that volume so it sounds a little bit more even. And then if you accidentally whack the bass like Hulk and you basically play really loud all of a sudden, it squishes it. So a compressor takes the quiet and boosts it up, takes the loud and cuts it down and basically squishes your sound so you've got a more consistent sound as you're playing whatever it is that you're playing. So it doesn't actually change any of the bass, middle or treble. It just makes your sound more consistent by boosting some of the low uh, volume and by cutting some of the higher volume. So it squishes everything. That is why we call it a compressor, because a compressor basically squishes. That is that little switch right there. These are basically just on a few different amplifiers. So we've got an aux in, we've got phones, and we've got something that says FX send and FX return. Some amplifiers do have these, some have them on the back, and some don't have them at all. An aux in is basically something that you can plug your iPad or your iPhone or your computer into, so you can actually listen to songs through the speaker while you practice. Some amplifiers do have it, once again, some don't, so don't worry. That's just what that is there for. The phones is obviously for headphones, so if your parents or if your partner or if someone down the street basically starts moaning, saying you're playing bass too loud, you can plug headphones in and no one will hate you, which is a good thing to do. Um, and it allows you to practice with the amp that you would go and use normally, but it just obviously only you can hear it, which is a really good thing to have. Slightly more expensive amplifiers do have this, whereas some of the lower budget ones don't. So once again, if you do have it, great. If you don't, do not worry. The FX send and FX return is basically if you're using effects and you're using a pedal board. Basically what this is, is you plug additional stuff in through that, and then that way you've got two signals that are splitting. But because this is a little bit more advanced and we're not talking about uh, pedal boards or we're not talking about effects pedals at this point in this lesson We're going to completely ignore them, but just know that they are there So if you've got a pedal board and you want to plug it in you're going to plug it into the send and the return So we will come back to those at a later date to describe all of those So now that we know what all of those dials and all those controls do We can now move on to actually playing and working out what we do to get a good solid bass tone So bear with me one minute. I'll grab my bass and we'll carry on so I've grabbed my bass, we're ready to rock and roll. Just to kind of highlight one thing as well before we literally start plugging everything in, you'll see that there is something called a DI down here. This is if you're out gigging or if you're trying to send a signal to a different person or a different set of equipment. So I've plugged that in just so my bass will come through very nicely on camera, but you guys won't need to worry about that unless you're gigging and obviously kind of out there making a living from music. So the DI is basically what we call a direct input, and that's all we need to know for now. So this is a jack lead. We're going to plug this into our bass first. And the reason why we do that is because if you don't, you will actually damage the speaker, depending on how loud the volume is on your amp. So always into the bass first, clip it in. Then what we do, we take the other end of this lead, and we need to plug it into the amp. And we also need to turn it on as well, which I will do in just one minute. So we have something called normal and we have something called high. Usually most amps will just have input, but what is normal and what is high and which one do I need to plug into? So the question and the answer to that is your bass. And the way that we find that out is, does your bass have a battery? So if you flip your bass round, if you have a battery component, then you need to plug into high because your bass is what we call active. Active is where you have a battery that powers the circuitry in the bass, which means your volume is a lot louder and it means it's a lot bigger than the other type of bass, which is called passive. A passive bass is one that doesn't have a battery. So really simple check. Do you have a battery component in your bass? Yes or no? If you do, you're going into high. If you don't, you're going into normal. So just double check because obviously all bases are different and it just depends on what base you have at that minute. So this one is active. So I'm going to plug into high. Just plug that straight in there. Then what we need to do is we need to turn it on. 
To turn it on, there is usually a switch at the front or at the back. This one is at the back. And all we do, plug it into obviously the mains, flick that up. There we go. We have a red light. We're all good to go. We now have this on. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration so you can hear it. There you go. We have sound. Good. So what we now need to do is, because we're actually playing a bass finally, if we put our volume roughly on three, and we're going to turn the gain all the way off, play a long note, that is literally just the volume. So it's coming through. It's OK, but it's not very strong. As soon as we turn the gain up, you can hear it's getting louder. And there will be a sweet spot where it just kind of sounds quite full, quite loud, but not too loud. So that for this bass is roughly about 5 or 6, which is just past 12 o'clock, which is where we set it when we were talking about the settings earlier. So that's going to be my setting for the gain. And if I need to go louder or higher, or if I need to go quieter and lower, we're going to turn the volume. So the gain now is completely done. We do not touch it. And that is different for each bass. So just try and find that sweet spot where it sounds nice and it sounds good and it sounds full. So moving, obviously, next is bass. What we do with all of these is we need to play a certain string open. So because we're talking about bass, which is really low, we play our E string open. And we dial it in manually. So what I'm doing here, that is completely rolled off. That's cut. So if I play it, it hasn't got a lot of bottom end to it. So I let the note ring out. I turn it up until it sounds really good, but doesn't sound too bassy. And what I mean by that is this. That sounds pretty cool, but if I go too far, hopefully you can hear that that's rumbling, that's vibrating, and that just sounds really bad. So we don't want to go that loud. Dial it back, and it's roughly just before 12 o'clock, so I'm like 11 and a half, roughly. And that's giving me a lot of definition in the bottom end. Once again, you do need to check every bass because every bass responds to this differently. So that is now going to be my bass setting. You can tweak it from gig to gig, song to song, but that's going to be my default setting. Next is going to be my middle. And if you're not really sure about the parametric, the para kind of thing, you can just leave it in the middle because that's a good place to start. So when we're dealing with the middle, we want to play our A or our D string. And the reason why is because that's where the middle frequencies kind of live on the bass guitar. So I'm going to play my A string. And then I'm going to roll this completely off. Hopefully you can hear that. That's got zero clarity. It's got like a proper bottom end. It's proper thumping. But you can't really hear the note. It just sounds like a duh kind of sound, which is just not cool. So playing the note again, dialing it up until you hear all that sweet clarity and you can hear the note. And that is just past 12 o'clock, so it's kind of like 1 o'clock. And what that is, is that's picking up the kind of click of my finger against the string, and it just makes it sound a little bit nicer. It's got a lot of sound to it. It's got a lot of clarity, which is a really good sound. If you do want to, and you want to be double, like kind of double check, double sure, move on to the D string. Double check that that doesn't sound bad either. Nope, that sounds pretty cool. So I'm happy with that. You can mess around with the parametric to try and sweeten the frequency. But unless you know what you're looking for, because this is just an introduction into amp settings, if you ignore that completely, and as your hearing and your ears get better, you will be able to select the frequency you like. Certain rooms do respond to better frequencies depending on the size, depending on how high the ceiling is, and depending on whether the bass is actually on the floor or raised off the floor. So sometimes lifting your bass up off the floor will give you a better sound. Obviously, when I mean bass, I mean bass amp will give you a better sound, whereas sometimes you want it on the floor because it will vibrate the floor a little, give you a lot more bottom end and make it sound sweeter. So 
that is your mid. For your treble, we wanna play the G string because the treble is the top end of the bass and the G string is kind of starting to cut into the top of that sound because obviously that sounds quite tingy. And if I turn that up a little bit too much, that's gonna cut through my hearing and that's gonna be horrible. So always cut, don't boost by default, always cut, which means go to the left and then just gradually twist it to the right until you like the sound of it. So that's getting a little bit too harsh for my liking. That's kind of like the sweet spot with this amp and this bass. So I've still got a nice little bit of clarity to it, but it's not super ear piercing. And it does depend on how you play the bass. If you're playing with your fingers, you will notice that the bottom end kind of needs to be cut a little bit more. If you're playing with a plectrum, you'll notice the treble needs to be cut a little bit more. And it's because of the material that is hitting the strings. So bear in mind, it depends on the style, it depends on the amp, and it also depends on the bass. So just kind of always double check these things because this is not gospel. You do not have to follow this. This is just trying to show you that there are differences depending on what you're looking for. So that's pretty loud and I'm liking that. So the volume can stay where it is. Just to prove a point though, if I roll that off, nothing, nothing at all. As Soon as I roll it back up. And then you just tweak that until you like the overall loudness of it. So obviously when I turned the gain completely off at the very start, because the volume was still up, we were getting a little bit of a signal. When I turned the volume off completely, we got nothing. And that's why gain and volume are completely different. Just to kind of give you another way of looking at it, if you have a phone call with someone, gain is basically telling that person to shout down the phone to you. It's something they're controlling from their end, which is basically the gain. We're controlling it before the speaker gets any sound, any volume. So that's like telling someone to shout down the phone at you because you can't hear them. The volume is basically like you turning the volume up on your phone because you haven't got it loud enough. The person on the other end is still speaking the same volume, still speaking the same loudness, but you're changing it on your end, which means obviously you're getting a bigger sound. That is what volume is doing. It's a really simple way to look at it. So gain is basically trying to work out how loud the bass needs to shout which you have to tweak from bass to bass. Volume is just how much is going to the speaker. Some people will want compression on. Compression is completely off at the minute. So compression is one of those weird things where it's very subtle. So if I play a note, press compression. It makes the sound a little bit rounder. It makes it sound a little bit thicker, but it also makes it sound a little bit more quiet. So it's really subtle. So if you can't hear that difference yet, do not worry because we will look at compression later because it is an effect. So when we start looking at effects pedals and so forth, we will look at this in more depth. But a compression, as I've already said, just squishes that sound, makes the quieter louder and the louder quieter. So it gives you a more rounded sound. So that is a really easy way to set your amp up if you've never set an amp up before. Just one more thing as well. The speaker, which is down here, can come in different sizes, but just get whatever size you've got, or if you do want to buy one of these, this speaker is big enough for home practice and also gigging. But speaker size can be your own personal preference. They do handle the sound different, so we're not going to talk about that today because that's a little bit more advanced. The one thing we are going to talk about though, this speaker is super low. It's not anywhere near my ears, it's not anywhere near my face, which is great, but I'm not actually hearing the full sound of this. Bass amps are omnidirectional, which means we play a note and it goes everywhere. The sound literally bounces across the entire room, which is good because we can hear it anywhere we stand, but the sound gets weaker the further away from the speaker you are. So this amp right here, which is really good, which is the Laney RB3, as I've already said, it is available on our online store. It has a kickback design. A kickback design means I can push it back very slowly. And what that means now is that it's still actually safe. It's not going to fall over. And it's because the back is sloped and angled. But you can probably already see on camera, 
that speaker is now facing my face and my ears a lot more, which means that volume and that sound is gonna be neater, cleaner, easier to hear, and probably sounds a lot louder as well. So I'm now getting the full sound of the amplifier, which is a big thing to do when you first start playing. So if you're looking for a kickback design, it is a really useful feature. Obviously, this was just an introduction into amp settings, so if you do need to rewatch any of that to rethink any of that information, by all means, just rewatch it as many times as you need to, and just have a little bit of a play, have a little bit of a tweak with it, and you'll find something that works for you with your amp, your bass, and your playing. Thank you for watching, and we'll move on to the next lesson. <laughs>